What's going on guys? It is Josh here with Buckeye Bowhunter and I'm out here today at the, my Stark County farm. If you guys have watched any of my YouTube channel, uh, you know that I hunt this farm for deer a lot. I do not do a lot of turkey hunting out here, but that is what I'm out here doing today. And I'm making a video, or I actually already made the video, about kind of my process of preseason turkey scouting. So you're going to want to stay tuned and watch this video. Uh, I got a whole bunch of tips and kind of what I do, how I go about it, what my process is before turkey season opens, and how I put myself in a position to be successful. I've made a lot of mistakes in my hunting career, so I've learned from my mistakes, or I at least try to. Hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes too. But before we get into all that, I just wanna do a quick housekeeping thing. I just wanna talk about a couple things I got coming out, uh, things that are debuting here, or just debuted, uh, so you guys are aware of it. If you don't know the Rut to Roost podcast, which I do with my buddy uh, Bryce Rohrbaugh, he's my co-host, is now available on all podcast platforms, or most major podcast platforms that you would listen to podcasts on so make sure you guys go and give us a listen we have two episodes out right now and we'll have a third episode coming out next week we're going to try to have an episode drop every other wednesday so two a month and we'll see if we can keep up with that pace really excited about that please give that a listen like subscribe do whatever you do on whatever podcast you listen to to help the algorithm we really appreciate it all right so we got that out of the way the second thing is i just did a podcast with 120 outdoors last week and it actually debuted today. They do an awesome job with their podcast and they had me on to talk about some turkey hunting stuff. We talked about, you know, beginner stuff, advanced stuff, everything from gun setups to strategy, tactics, to calling. Um, if it had to do with turkey hunting, we talked about it. So they're great hosts. They have a great podcast. Do me a favor, whatever you listen to podcasts on, check out 120 Outdoors. Give them a like, a follow, a subscribe. I'll really appreciate it. They really do do a good job. They got a lot of really cool content on there. And last but not least, this spring, my series Roosted is going to debut. So I'm really excited about that. I got a hunt planned in Kentucky opening week. So however long, I, you know, I got a whole week slotted for that. I may only be there a couple days. I may there, be there a whole week, depending on how uh, much we struggle. But I'll be hunting with my buddy from work down there, Jason, and his son, Parker. So we should have some fun running around the Daniel Boone and some private land he's got. I'm really excited about it. Uh, so stay tuned, looking out for that. And then I'll be hunting the Wayne National Forest opening weekend. So maybe I'll run into some of you other turkey hunters down there. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but gonna have a really good time down there hopefully try and chase some of these birds i'm gonna be in some places i've been in the past since i'm not really gonna have a lot of time to stop and scout down there uh so looking forward to that so starting april 15th i'll be turkey hunting but i probably won't get a video out until after the ohio season has started maybe the week you know that monday or tuesday i'll try and get a video out uh, of my kentucky stuff and then from that point forward i'll try to keep it as current as possible i'm a pretty busy guy i still got a full-time job i try to keep up with this this is my passion my hobby um and i make these videos for you guys so please keep tuning in thank you so much for clicking on this one Hopefully this video helps you out, but that's all I got for you. So let's get to what you guys came for and we'll see you on the next one. So I am out here today at the uh, Stark County farm. I'm gonna do me a little bit of turkey scouting today. So I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. I'm just gonna hopefully put together a little video here about what I do when it comes to scouting for turkeys here in Ohio and what I'm looking for kind of the process and how I go about it so I haven't had a lot of luck here in the last few years since uh, the turkey population has kind of dropped a little bit I feel like there hasn't been birds here um, when usually you know years before that um, there would always be a bunch of turkeys here we had a pretty good hatch last spring so I'm kind of hoping that uh, we're gonna get some birds running around here this spring so with that said let's get into it i might do a little shed hunting while i'm out here too so first things first let's talk about trying to find a place to hunt if you're a new turkey hunter and you don't have a place to turkey hunt you're looking for a place to turkey hunt get on your computer uh, i've got a video about electronic scouting so i'm not going to go into crazy detail um, i'll put it in the description below but um 
Electronic scouting is a absolutely fantastic tool to help save you a ton of time and help cover a ton of area without actually ever getting out and having to walk all of it, I guess, if that makes sense. So whether you're looking for private land to get permission to hunt on, or you're looking for that really good spot on public land, I usually use Onyx maps, uh, Hunt Stand, Hunt Wise, Google Maps, whatever you want to use, whatever you have access to. And the first thing that I usually look for when I'm electronic scouting is diverse habitat types. I'm looking for, you know, and a lot of people talk about this, but it's true because it, it kills turkeys and it puts you in a place where turkeys usually are going to frequent. And the more cover types and habitat types that you have in a single location coming together, the higher chances you're going to have an actual concentration of turkeys in that location. If you have nesting cover, if you have roosting habitat, you have food, uh, water, all these things in one location, there's probably going to be turkeys there as opposed to an area that doesn't have all of those elements. So you can see the amount of time this saves by getting on your computer you know, scouring the aerial photos, put on the hybrid layer so you can actually see to topography lines and figuring out where those locations are, whether pr private or public, and then, you know, react accordingly. If, if you find a couple different farms that look really freaking good, um, there's swamp, there's mature forest, there's you know, CRP, crop fields, uh, maybe a river bottom going through it. Go ask for permission, go knock on the door, send them a letter, whatever. If you find it on public property, you got a really good spot to check out. Most of the private land that I have permission to hunt on came from looking at maps, doing electronic scouting. So this property that I'm hunting, the Stark Farm, is a pretty good representation of an area that has a lot of different cover types, right? We have a really big block of mature forest to the north of me. We have some younger growth forest over here to the west, to the south, and further to the west is a big beaver pond, a big swamp. Um, there's some CRP fields back in here. I'm standing in a big cut bean field. We got a power line that runs through here that's just overgrown, real thick, gnarly. And then on the back side of this swamp, I know there's more mature hardwoods, more roosting habitats. So um, with this creek that runs through the bottom, runs through the middle of this beaver pond, you got kind of all these different habitat types within, you know, 20 acres here that these turkeys don't have to move very far to find what they need on a day-to-day -day basis. They got water, they got food, they got cover, nesting habitat, they got roosting habitat, they got strutting areas, these big wide open fields, pretty cool. So I'm gonna pretend we just found this property we just got permission. I actually did just get my permission slip signed uh, about 10 minutes ago for the year again. For you guys who aren't really, maybe you're a deer hunter, you haven't really turkey hunted, scouting for turkeys isn't really um, a very intensive thing, or not as intense, I should say, as like deer scouting is. Um, you're not looking for that spot on the spot where you're going to Put an arrow through a turkey you're mostly calling these birds into you so you just kind of got to be in the area really you're not going to be looking for much more than just some tracks and maybe some turkey droppings right just to give you the idea and let you know that these birds are here um i found some tracks already walking up the edge of this field i'm going to kind of walk the whole edge of this field all the way down see if I can find it you know maybe a higher concentration of tracks or a location where they're really frequenting you know today's actually a really good day to be looking for turkey tracks because it has rained so much right we have some really wet soft soil um, you know some wet spots that are going to definitely show turkey tracks if they're in the area this is pretty cool right here it's pretty obvious this is a, a hen right here you can see it's pretty small compared to my hand and then right over here to the right is a gobbler track look how big that middle toe is but like i said these look old but it, it rained like crazy yesterday so um you know these could be from just the other day or two days ago but definitely a good sign we'll keep this in mind and keep on moving the other tactic that I use to my advantage uh, that has been really helpful for me over the last few years is trail cameras, deploying trail cameras this time of year. Um, 
this is the time of year when these birds are kind of breaking out of their big flocks. These toms are traveling all over the place, you know, especially two, three-year-old birds looking for where they're going to kind of post up for the spring for mating season. And this is the time of the year you're going to want your to get your trail cameras out looking for turkeys. And what that's going to help me do is passively scout these properties just like deer and um, exclude or cross off certain properties based on what my trail camera photos are telling me. Um, if I'm putting cameras out on this farm and you know I don't get a single turkey picture up on the the corner of this field where you would think turkeys are gonna frequent, um, I'm probably not gonna turkey hunt here much. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, using cameras to your advantage and uh, actually spreading them out, putting them in locations where birds may strut, birds might travel, uh, little pinch points, kind of just like deer use property, turkeys are gonna kind of do the same thing. So, I'm on my way back to the truck here. Uh, I'm pretty excited about what I found. Um, bunch of tracks kind of around this whole bean field. Uh, put a camera out, so between that and this camera, I'm hopefully gonna get a pretty good idea of how many birds, how big of birds, um, when they kind of plan on using this field every day or how often they're in this field every day. But that brings me to my last tip. Before the spring season opener, the best way to put yourself in a position to succeed, the best tactic that I could tell you guys is to get up out of bed a couple different weekends in a row before turkey season opens and get out to your farms, get out to your properties, your public land, and listen. Put ears on these properties because these birds are going to tell you exactly where they're roosting. And nothing is going to help you be more successful than that tactic right here. If I come out and I stand on this tree line in the morning when it's, you know, the crack of dawn, when it's breaking daylight, on a really nice day like today, I wish I would have woke up, so I don't even take my own advice, but um, and then birds start gobbling across the swamp, I know exactly where I'm gonna start my hunt on opening morning um, or whenever I do get back in here. And they'll probably be pretty close to there or in the same tree if nothing bugs them up before then. So get out there and listen to these properties, use your ears, use your feet, use your computer, um, everything we talked about, and you're gonna put yourself in a much better position to be successful this year as opposed to you know like i did last year really not scout at all before the season and just bank on the fact that well i'm pretty sure they're going to be turkeys there because they were there last year well they weren't so i didn't kill a bird don't make that mistake learn from my mistakes i know i'm going to learn from my mistakes and get out here and do a lot more scouting here in the next few weeks before turkey season opens so the next couple weekends, at least before I go to Kentucky, I'm going to be out here trying to hit all my uh, local properties that I hunt in the morning, listening to see if I can hear any of these birds gobbling. With that said, hopefully this video helps you guys out. I really appreciate it. Hopefully it gives you some ideas, uh, help you be more successful this spring. Maybe you've thought of all this stuff already, maybe you haven't. So I appreciate you guys watching. Good luck this spring. I'm really wishing everybody the best. I really want to thank you guys for sticking with me watching all these videos, listening to the podcast, all that stuff. So thank you so much. Keep it coming. Keep commenting. If you got anything to say, put your comments below. Good luck this spring. Stay safe. And we will see you guys on the next one.